Welcome back to our Vector Agent starter tutorial series. Uh, this is Nick Siebert, and we are going to import our vector fields into Unreal Engine 4, show you how to tweak it in Cascade, and make some really pretty particle effects. Um, so, let's get started. So, first thing we want to do is you want to go to your content browser. And my content browser is my other window. You can see that I already have a, a simple material set up for us to, to work with. It's just a radial gradient exponential plugged into a multiply that's plugged into the particle color of or the white channel of the particle color node and that's in a base color and emissive and we've just got the alpha channel so the, the mask and the alpha channel are going into our, our opacity and we actually want to make it unlit and so additive and unlit and we should be good to go so we actually don't need this base color. Uh, from there, that's basically the ins and outs of our glow. You can use any texture you want. I'm not going to go into that kind of stuff right now. Uh, so let's get started in the particles. So what you want to do is you want to right click and create a new particle system in whatever folder you want to create it in. We'll just say that this is the uh, vector region. Uh, particles 01. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and open it. And you can see that we have our uh, default emitter. If you don't know what Cascade is, uh, one day we will have really in-depth tutorials about Cascade and how to use it and all that good stuff. Uh, but for today we're primarily focusing on just a follow-along tutorial of how to make a GPU particle emitter and have it be affected by the vector field that you import from our software. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to first create a type data, so a new type data emitter, and we want it to be new GPU sprites. So now you can see that it says warning the particle system has no fixed bounding box and contains a GPU emitter. That's how you know you did something right. So uh, from there what we want to do is we want to go to required the required module so you just left click it you left click here fxm glow and we bring that on and there we go there's our little glow texture uh, from there we want to go ahead and go to view and vector fields and that's going to set it up so that we can see our vector fields once we import them next what we want to do is we want to right click and go to vector field and local vector field and so we select local vector field and it says vector field right here and ask if you want to browse for it in the content browser search for it from the drop down but we don't have it yet so let's go ahead and save this real quick I'll minimize that and we'll create a new folder called vector oh, vector fields bring that in and we'll import and the thing that we need to do next is browse to where our vector field files are and so you can see that we have the batch file so I'll just import one random batch file and I'll import our tutorial file so we've got those in let's just go ahead and save all of our stuff and now we're gonna re-enter our particle system and we can select the tutorial vector field so as you can see you can I don't know if you can see it on on the video very well but there are very teeny little red dots that show where the actual vectors are and you can see that we have a pretty big bounding box let me expand this preview window so you can see that we have the bounding box so this is the negative 1024 by uh, positive 1024 vector field that we created uh, from here what we want to do is we want the particles to actually be affected by this vector field Technically, they're being affected right now, but the intensity is too low to do anything pretty. So we want to just increase the intensity. You can click and drag right, and you can see that the vectors are growing. And we probably want to do like, say, 700. It's probably a good number, say 750. And now you can see that the vectors are going, or the actual particles are following the vectors and going off into the left direction. Uh, Next, what we probably want to do is expand all. So you click spawn, 
expand all, and we want to change the distribution rate. So how many particles do we want to spawn? Let's increase that to like 5,000 uh, per second. And maybe we want to change the lifetime particles. We'll expand all again. I get say four and five. So here we go. We got the vectors or the particles. Sorry, actually following the vector field again, and it's looking pretty good. And so uh, one of the things is that we can do now. So you can see that the particles are going out of the view, and it's just stop rendering. So what you do is you go up here to display bounds. Click the arrow beside it and hit set fixed bounds, and now it won't disappear whenever you go inside of it because the GPU knows that it should render where your camera is inside the bounds. So from here, we can go back into our local vector field, and just like our software, uh, you can tile the vector field in the X, Y, and Z axes, or axes, I don't know how you would say that, axes. So we've got this, and the particles are now tiling, rather than just going off into space. So let's actually turn that back on. And we can change the tightness to say one, and that'll make the particles follow the vector field very, very, I guess you would say, profusely or explicitly. So it basically says, if the tightness is one, the particles are guaranteed to follow, you know, so and so vector. So whatever vector it actually goes into, that's the one it's guaranteed to follow. And then obviously one vector passes it off to the next. So this is actually like a pretty cool tentacle. And so I think that maybe we'll actually work with something like this. So let's say we wanted to make this tentacle, you know, move throughout the vector field. So what you could do is you could right click and then go to vector field and VF rotation rate. And so we've got that, and I like to just do it in the Z axis. So there we go, we'll kind of rotate this tentacle-like structure, or tentacle particle effect throughout the vector field. Maybe that's not fast enough, so we'll do say one. <laughs> and you, know, you can just get some really interesting effects. And so we'll pull this over, and let me pull this content browser by the screen, and drag this over, and so here's what the particle looks like in the world view. It's probably too fast, so we'll go 0.1. I'll do 0.1 in all X, Y, and Z. And you look at that, we've got a, a pretty cool tentacle-like movement going on. A crazy string of particles. Uh, well, let's go back in here and let's not make it a string of particles. Let's change the tightness to say 0.5 so that it's not as tight around the vector field. And the next thing you'll notice is that the particles are spawning from zero, zero, zero in the vector field. It is absolute zero. It's spawning from one, you know, pixel width spawn point. So what we can do is we can go to location, and I prefer to do a sphere. Now you can see that the particles are interacting with more vector fields because it is encompassing more area inside the vector field. So let's increase the expand all. Let's increase the start rate to 250. And now we've got a pretty little vector field going. And just to show you, uh, we can stop the rotation. And you can see that, say, like there's a tentacle going out here, and there's one going out here. And if we keep the camera the same and change the vector field, we can see that for one, the other vector field is a whole lot smaller and it's got you know other tiling effects and stuff like that and it's only a six by six by six which i believe is 216 vectors say the 216 or 256 vectors in this one little space and so for that you know we could bring it back down to say 20 and your particles will go crazy throughout it and this will allow us to show the tiling effect even better so you can see as soon as they go outside of the Bounding box, the particles just go off into the direction that they were spit out at. Currently, in our software, if the particles are spit out of the bounding box and we don't have tiling on, it is affected by the last known vector. So say if you had a rotational vector field, the particles would rotate you know, indefinitely outside. Hopefully in a UV4 plugin that we do, we will add added functionality so that you can affect particles outside of the bounding box 
by the last known vector that the particle was affected by. Uh, but let's go ahead and turn tiling back on and let's go ahead and do the color over life module and let's say we want to make the beginning just a, a really interesting red and then we want to make say the ending a really interesting blue and now we've got a really pretty looking particle effect going on here if we turn the rotation rate back on we get some very interesting you know movement and, and rotation just a ton of cool stuff this would be really great for a magic effect and so here we go actually in our preview we've got some really cool stuff going oh yeah that looks really nice and let's change our vector field back to the tutorial one that we're going through and let's uh, let's actually look at what that looks like in the main preview so yeah we can see that we've got it's really interesting <laughs> it actually looks really blurry i don't know if that's from depth of field or eye adaptation or maybe it's just the actual uh anti-aliasing that, that the engine is doing right this second I'm not sure but it looks really nice and we got some nice tentacle effects going off this would be cool for something like a staff or something end of a, a wizard staff uh, we'll increase the uh, sphere again and do like that another cool thing that we can do is we can you know make say a burst so we can make it burst say 5,000 particles every second all right let's bump it to 25,000 so there we go you know spit out 25,000 extra particles every second so that's looking pretty good we got some cool little rotation going on a lot of different little points it's looking like a pretty good effect and as you can see within just a couple minutes we have created in vector region exported and then imported it into Unreal Engine 4 and created a really nice interesting useful effect that you know you can use inside your level on a spell effect you know anything you want the last thing I will go over in this I gotta close out it glitched out uh, let me go back into the particle system last thing I'll go over is a global vector field and because the vector field that we exported uh, for the tutorial is so large so say you know the 1024 uh, bounding box size it's decently large so it'd be good for a global vector field and actually before I do that there is one more thing I want to go over real quick and that is the uh, 3d scale so say we can scale this vector field up by three and it'll create more turbulent looks uh, because the distance or the density between the vectors is a lot greater so the particles have to travel farther to get affected in a new direction and so that creates some pretty cool you know turbulence effects uh, but we're going to go back down to one and we're actually just going to delete this vector field and you can see that this right here is what the particles look like and we're going to turn the burst off uh, so to do a global vector field we need to go back to global vector field and say the vector field scale is 1 let's say the global field tightness is 0.75 and we'll just save that and we can go ahead and close that now what we want to do is we want to go to our content browser here's our content browser and we can just drag in this random vector field and let's actually go to show and I believe uh, I gotta find developer so let's see developer so you have show developer vector fields and let's turn it on and yeah I don't know what's going on I actually think it's my my fog that's been affecting the way that the particles look so I'll turn my fog off and so we've got this global vector field now it's actually inside and you can see that it's not doing a whole lot uh, we need to actually click the vector field volume as they call it change the intensity and you can see that the vectors grow as you change the intensity so let's change the intensity to say 750 like it was in the editor and now the particles are moving through the global vector field space uh, to my knowledge currently you cannot tile a vector field throughout the entire world in Unreal Engine 4 if it is global 
maybe our plugin will fix that. I don't know the limits behind that. Uh, it probably would create an infinite amount of data or something, and it would just be bad. But I don't know, so don't quote me on that. Um, so you can see that as we move the global vector field through the actual particle system, that the particle system is affected by the way that the global vector field, you know, interacts with the particles. And so you can see that particles are uh, being ejected out from the side over here. So let me just go ahead and duplicate this vector field. You can see that if the particles go through this vector field, they can also interact with the next vector field that they touch. So if you had like a point attraction vector field so that all the particles go into the center, you know, you could create some really cool combination effects with this. Um, let's see, another thing that you can do is, you know, change the world scale. So we can change, oh, that's the wrong thing. That's the particle system. I don't want to do that. Um, we can go back to the vector field and change the world scale. And you can see that the particles are affected much greater by this. And you can also parent the particles to something. So say you parent it to uh, a trail that's moving through the, the actual vector field. Uh, you can parent it to a model, an object, anything that's actually moving through the world. And as long as it's moving through the uh, vector field and it has the global uh, vector field node uh, inside Cascade, it should be affected by it if you tell it to. Uh, and then, you know, just lastly, we'll do this again, and you can see easily that you can affect particles globally, and you can always change it to really crazy, ridiculous numbers if you want to. So let's do like 7,500. And so, you can create a lot crazier turbulence, and you know, who knows? I'd like to see what you guys create. I hope this was a good introductory tutorial. We'll go into a lot more advanced techniques and concepts with vector field creation and generation and how to create some really cool effects with vector fields and how you can use them in your games. Uh, that's it for our starter tutorial series. I hope that this was useful to you guys and I'll see you around. Thanks.